stretching portraits of the Haunted Mansion are one of the most iconic and my personal favorite part of the ride. I had always wanted a set of these and knew that they would be the perfect addition to my Haunted Mansion bedroom. It took me about 10 years of waiting on eBay, just checking it every day, every week, whatever. Uh, I think I even set up a notification to let me know when stretching portraits were available on eBay. And finally, one day, I saw an auction that had all four, which is rare to have all four of these, especially at this size, together on one. I had been in a bidding war earlier, like maybe a couple weeks prior to getting these, for two different ones. And they were separate. It was just, I think it was this one and this one that were being sold separately. I don't remember how much they went for, but I know they went to two separate people. I got lucky enough that these were all on the same listing and they were the size that they are. Like, I had always wanted these, but I had only ever seen them like this big. And I wanted them to have a presence about them. So I wanted to make sure they were at least five feet tall, which is what these are. I think I paid about, it can't, I think it came down to about $60 per portrait, which honestly is kind of a steal for the size and the quality that they are. There wasn't any damage on them, except for this one here had a little bit of damage in the back, but who cares, no one's gonna see it. And so when I got them in, I was super excited and I took them to Michael's to get them framed. And they told me it was gonna be $600 per frame. I, I wasn't gonna do that. That's too much money, that's $2,400. I ain't got that money. And then I took it to Hobby Lobby and they told me about the same thing. So I said, you know what, let me just see if I can make this myself. Fast forward two years and I finally had the money to make these and I think I made them for about $300. All four of them. Together. Not $2,400. So with that being said, let's get to it and I'll show you how I did it myself. Starting off, I found these moldings at Lowe's. They were what I found to be the closest thing to what I thought the frames looked like in the stretching room. Um, in a perfect world, they would have been completely smooth, but I could not find one without like that rope detail in the middle, but they were close enough, and I wasn't going to make these things stretch anyway. Before I did any measuring on these, I decided I needed to cut the ends off of these because I had noticed that they weren't straight. And I needed to level those off, so I did that, and then I lined everything up and uh, measured them out and cut them. I had already like measured them out before, but when I had noticed that these weren't a right angle, I had to start over. So the portraits that I have measure out to be about 60 inches tall by 21 inches wide. And I'm going to use these corner pieces, so I took that into consideration into how long I wanted to cut these out. So I measured them out to be about 58 inches long and 18 inches wide, because that square that I'm using will add in that extra inch that I needed. And then once that was done, I cut all of them out. Something that I had to do off camera was try to figure out how exactly I was going to assemble this frame. Um, in a perfect world, I probably would have used metal. I would have had a much more stable frame. Uh, instead, I had extra of this backing board, which we'll see later in the video, that I cut into one inch strips. And I should have cut it with the grain, and I cut it against the grain, which ended up making it um, a little bit more flimsy. And if it was cut with the grain, it would have been a lot more stable. Originally, I did want to nail these together, but I was having an issue nailing them into that square block. For some reason, the nail just was not going in. 
And I think I had, I bought the smallest nails that I could find and they were still too long for this frame. So if I had nailed into the, uh, into the molding itself, it would have ended up going through and you would have been able to see the nail. So I ended up gluing the whole thing together with wood glue and clamping them together and left them overnight. I started with just doing the molding first and then attaching the square blocks and then attaching the whole frame together and leaving that over the next couple nights. And now it was time to choose which stain I wanted to use. I picked up three from Home Depot, Red Oak, Red Mahogany, and Dark Walnut. They all looked about to be what I wanted. I was looking for something with like a rich color, but I wanted to have an option of dark, which is why I got the Dark Walnut. The Dark Walnut ended up being a little too dark for my liking. Um, and then it was a really close call between the red mahogany and the red oak. And the final deciding factor on this was taking these samples and putting it into the room and seeing the lighting with it. And we ended up deciding going with the red mahogany because it definitely had that richer look and it looked better with the purple. Now when I had tested these samples, I had noticed some inconsistencies with the staining and the wood. So I ended up finding this stain conditioner which I applied first and then let sit and dry for a while before I applied the stain. And once that conditioner was ready, I applied the stain itself. I ended up using a rag. I just felt like it was easier for me, but you could use a brush if you wanted to. I just wanted to make sure there wasn't too much stain on the frame itself. Now, I was pretty on track to finish these frames like in time, and then it got cold, and then it got real cold, and we lost power for a few days. <laughs> It doesn't snow in Texas, and it snowed in Texas, and we were stuck. And you cannot stain anything if it's below 60 degrees. It will end up blooming, and you just won't be happy with the result, and you'll have to sand it down and do it all over again. So just wait until it's above 60 degrees, be patient, uh, and do this in the warmer weather, and then it'll turn out great. last thing I did as part of the staining process, I gave it a nice finish and the stain was done. And it looked beautiful. Now this is the backing board that I was talking about earlier. I took the frames once they were finished and traced them out up to the edge of the molding itself and then cut the backboard and that was going to later be the entire backing of this frame after the portraits were in. Now this was the most expensive part of this project. I got this plexiglass measured out to uh, the exact specification that I needed. It ended up being about $135 for all four of these and I had these shipped to my house. And they did have a little bit of damage on the edges, but it wasn't anything that the frame itself wasn't going to cover. I did have to do a little bit of trimming on these because the frames themselves weren't measured out perfectly. That's my fault. Um, but it wasn't too bad. It was maybe a couple millimeters to a centimeter of what I needed to cut off off of two sides. 
and I just traced out what needed to be cut and then used a Dremel tool to cut all of that out. Now after I cleaned off the frames, I used a clear caulking to glue down the plexiglass. But I ended up finding that this ended up being a waste of time. Neither me or my dad could figure out why, but the plexiglass did not stick in most areas on the on to the frame. There were some areas that stuck, and there were some areas that were popping up even after I had uh, put some weight on the frames and left them overnight to dry. And then I simply took off the protective cover, cleaned off the glass a little bit with some cleaner, and placed the portraits on, and brought back that backing board and just stapled the backing board onto the frames themselves. thing needed to do was to screw on these hooks and they were officially ready to be hung. I couldn't be happier with how these turned out. I think they look absolutely beautiful. I think the color looks great. I think they look great in the space against the purple walls and everything. I think the one thing that could make me happier is if maybe they stretched, but I don't know how to do that. So, and also these would have to be made out of vinyl or something, not paper. But anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I hope you get to make some of these for yourself, whether they be this size or smaller. And do consider subscribing to my channel. I do plan to try to make about two videos a month, anywhere from making more furniture items or Halloween set pieces, and even some cake tutorials in the future. So stick around and I will see you in the next video.